we've now nailed it down so that if you want to write story based emails that consistently sell then there is now a seven step process that I believe you can follow so I'm just going to give you a quick overview in this webinar of what that seven step process is I know that not everyone not everyone on this webinar is a writer but I want to give you a quick overview of how it works so so step zero in the seven step process yes there is actually a step zero <laughs> Um, a step zero step zero is research everybody thinks that they have a writing problem and that when you when you go to write a marketing email that it's the actual process of writing the story and writing the content that's hard whereas actually the writing itself is learnable what the, the problems tend to lie in research rather than writing so the process that I've taken from Sean and adapted slightly is to use Evernote. So all of my ideas for things I want to write about. So in my business, I write a daily email. So I write an email five days a week. And the key to writing an email at that level of frequency is to be constantly researching for ideas. So I have Evernote on my computer and on my phone. And I'm always making notes of things that I might want to write about. So in Evernote, I have a stories research folder. So you can see in here that I've got 294 notes of potential stories I might want to write about. I've also got a notebook for blog ideas. So these are specific ideas for daily emails. I've got 66 notes in here. So suddenly writing a daily email doesn't feel quite so intimidating if I've got 66 ideas to be working from. I've also got um, a, a notebook called IC Letter Ideas. So this is this is for my print newsletter that goes out once a month. So again, by the time it comes for me to write my print newsletter, I'm not scrabbling around for ideas. I've already got the research done and ready to go. So step zero is the groundwork, and it's always ongoing and it never ends. And actually, just going back to the research step for a second, all of my ideas for things I might want to write about, stories I might want to tell. All of my best ideas never come at moments where it's convenient to write them down. Most of my best ideas come when I'm in the shower or when I'm out running or quite often when I'm asleep at three o'clock in the morning. I'll, I'll wake up and Lindsay is quite used to find me there tapping away on my phone in Evernote desperately writing ideas down before they vanish because as soon as I go to sleep I forget what the idea was and then it's no good to me so you have to you have to store these things as you go and it makes things so much easier later on step one then is story selection so the chap on the right is Hector Berlioz I might have pronounced Hector's name wrong Hector was a 19th century composer of what we now call classical music and in 1827, he went to see a production of Hamlet in Paris. And the actress who played Ophelia was an Irish actress named Harriet Smithson. And Berlioz fell wildly in love with Harriet Smithson. He asked to see her after the performance. He wrote love letters to her. He almost stalked her. And Harriet Smithson rejected his, his advances. And in the pain of his rejection, he composed the piece of music that he's most famous for, which is Symphony Fantastique. And to make it painfully obvious that Symphony Fantastique is about Harriet Smithson's rejection of his advances, Berlioz produced extensive program notes where he describes his rejection and ends up with the artist, as he refers to himself, killing himself in an opium overdose. Harriet Smithson went and watched the opening performance of Symphony Fantastique, um, read the program notes, and then miraculously fell in love with Berlioz. Uh, and, they ended up get, and they ended up getting married a few years later. So that, that, that story pretty much sums up, um, in my opinion, many of the things that are, that are wrong in the world today. But the thing that comes across for me when, when we listen to Symphony Fantastique, it, it's, it's a sound that drips with self-indulgence. Berlioz was only interested in himself. 
He was only interested in his own woes, in his own rejection. And the story that he tells in his music, it's, it's all about him and his self-absorption. And when most people select stories, they do so on a, on a similar basis. So the real challenge when you're selecting stories is, is to select stories that your audience are at least going to be familiar with. So the story that I've just told you about Hector Berlioz, you, you may have never heard of Berlioz before, but you've heard of classical music. You know what a composer is. So the story is already in your frame of reference. So the challenge in story selection is to select stories that your readers are familiar with, but are also unexpected. In step two, then, what we do is we create a timeline. So this is a technique that I've um, taken from Sean. And what we do on the timeline is we map out the ebbs and the flow, the up and down of the story. So most of the time when a story is boring, it's because there isn't enough contrast. So every story has contrast. It has good things that happen. It has bad things that happen. It has suspense between the good things and the bad things. And this is what brings a story to life. And you can actually map this out in a timeline. So in, my, in one of my courses, I tell a story about the time when I almost lost my money belt on a bus in Colombia. So I, I have a bit of context at the beginning. I then explain how I was relaxed on the bus. I'd had a busy time in Cartagena. I'd relaxed, I'd taken off my money belt. And then halfway, halfway, the bus conductor came on and shouted, Cambio, 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 change buses. So I got off, I didn't have my money belt. And then I had two hours of regret. Eventually I was the last one on the bus. And then finally the bus conductor managed to get my money belt back. And this was really a great example of trust. Especially in South America, where you hear all these stories about tourists being robbed, this is probably the the best example of trust that I can that I can think of from first-hand experience. So, how would we take that story and use it in a marketing email? Well, step three then is to create what I call the speedy first draft, and the speedy first draft only emerged out of the work group that I did, because at this point in the work group, I basically told my students, okay go and write me a story. And they all struggled because they had to contend with the blank screen. So what we do in the speedy first draft is we take each timeline element and we give it a paragraph in the speedy first draft. So if we have a look at the timeline, you'll see you've got context at the beginning. So this gets its own paragraph here. So context, the year was 2009, I was on a bus, etc., etc. The next item is that I had relaxed. So I'd relaxed after a, after a hectic time in Cartagena. It was beautiful countryside. So each item gets its own paragraph with really basic sentences. So we're not trying to write out the whole email, which is a very intimidating, very difficult thing to achieve. We're just taking the timeline and creating it into an embryo story at this stage. What we then do then is we create a second draft. So we take the speedy first draft and we expand the sentences out slightly we add in a few line breaks here and there, but fundamentally it still follows the same story pattern. We're, we're still sticking to the plan that we set out in the timeline. In step five then we'll check for suspense and intrigue. So we'll check that there's sufficient suspense about whether I will or won't get my money belt back. And then in step six, what we do is we reconnect with the content. Because this is the really, this is the most important thing I can tell you today is we're not telling stories just to entertain people or titillate people or deliver mindless sound bites of information there's more than enough of that happening in the world today what we're doing is yes so yes we're telling stories to entertain people but we're also telling stories to educate people deliver a message build trust and ultimately upgrade someone's level of thinking about what it is that you do so the, so the way the reconnect works is at the reconnect, we'll start telling the story and we'll start delivering the content. So the content is what you would have written had you not included the story to begin with. So my reconnect might look like this. So I've got two, two paragraphs down here where I say, despite all the horror stories you hear of tourists being robbed in South America, I thought this was a great example of trust. In my experience, 
Trust is a major reason why people choose Infusionsoft as their email marketing platform. Your prospects have to know, like, and trust you before they will buy, so you need a system that enables you to build up that trust over a longer period of time. We then go into the contents. There are four reasons why you should book a demo with me, etc., etc. So I've used the one idea of trust to link the story to the content and make them feel closely connected. Step seven then is editing. So most people do not allow enough time to edit their emails. Most emails, most marketing emails anyway, are produced in a rush. I am guilty of this at times. I try and allow a full day between writing and, and editing. Because what happens is I will write out an email and in the heat of the moment, I'll decide that Shakespeare himself couldn't have written the better email. And then I'll sleep on it overnight and I'll look at it the next day and I'll wonder what exactly I was thinking. <laughs> so I, I have a very specific editing process. So, so steps one to six are about expanding out your timeline into a, into a story. Step seven then is, is a tidying up step. It's, it's, it's a chopping away step where we're then refining the story into a more polished finished product. So that's really the seven step process. It's about, it's about getting going and it's about starting to tell stories. If you're not telling any stories in your marketing at the moment, it's about getting going with storytelling and starting to communicate your why, starting to communicate what you believe in so that people in your sales process can, can build up a greater degree of trust in what you do.